I'm John Carter in Moscow. Now in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I'm John Carter in Petra. Reporting from India. In Colombia. I'm John Carter. Today on the Carter Report, John Carter talks about great balls of fire and the signs of the times. I'm just so glad to see you here today. The topic is an amazing prophecy. Great balls of of fire. I want to welcome our wonderful audience here in Southern California, our audience around the world, and specifically our new audience on Fox TV in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. So the topic today is apocalyptic prophecy, a tremendous thing. It's entitled Great Balls of Fire, with all apologies to Jerry Lee, Lee Lewis. <laughs> uh, I want to read you the words of a person whom is considered by many Americans to be a prophet, a modern-day prophet. This person wrote in 1906 right here in the Golden State of California. In the night I was, I thought, in a room, not in my own house. I was in a city where I knew not, and I heard... Expression after expression. I rose up quickly in bed and saw from my window large walls of fire jetting out with sparks in the form of arrows and buildings were being consumed and in a few minutes the entire block of buildings was falling and mournful groans came distinctly to my ears. I cried out, to learn what was happening. Then I awoke, but I could not tell where I was, for I was in another place than home. I said, O oh Lord, where am I? What shall I do? A voice spoke, Be not afraid, nothing shall harm you. Those words were written by an amazing woman who had an impact upon the lives of tens of millions of people, an American by the name of Ellen White. And she says that she had a vision given to her by God and she saw these large balls of fire that were consuming American cities. Now, what does it mean? And most importantly, is it in harmony with last day events as described in the Bible? Now we ask this question, firstly, what is the climax of history? Because many people, besides Christians, believe that we are approaching the great climax in the history of the world. I want you to take your Bible here in the studio to John chapter 14 and verses 1 down to 3. And this describes the climax of history. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus Christ said he would come again. And this would be, he said, the very climax of history. Now there is a pagan concept of time that I don't believe. It is the idea that time is circular, that everything repeats itself ad nauseum. This is the idea of the ancient Greeks, the pagan world, uh, and the Hindus today, that everything goes around and around. And that's why they have the doctrine of reincarnation, but it leads to despair and hopelessness because you can never really make a difference in the world. Everything you're doing has already taken place. But the Bible concept is entirely different and it is entirely scientific. It teaches 
the time had a beginning. Listen to this. The Bible actually says there was a time when there was no time. It says before time began. We believe from science and from scripture that everything had a beginning and everything starts with the divine logos, the word. There was a debate that I watched between the great Professor Dawkins and the great Professor Lennox from Oxford University. And Dawkins, being an agnostic or an atheist, said there has there's nothing, nothing, everything came from nothing. And the great Professor Lennox, who is a committed, a committed Christian, said, no, everything came from intelligence. It came from the Logos, and everything moves towards a, a planned end. And that end will be the return of Christ. And the good news is this, my friends around the world. There is coming a new heaven and a new earth. And then there will be the commencement of billions of years of good times, good times, perfect health, unlimited vitality and uh, energy with family, friends uh, and loved ones and the personal presence of Christ and uh, complete satisfaction. This is why we have hope and this is why we are not suicidal. <laughs> I want you to turn on the Bible to the book of Revelation, the last book, Revelation 21 and verses 1 down to 5. Revelation chapter 21 and verses 1 down to 5, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So the Bible teaches there is a brand new, beautiful, wonderful world coming. It is so good. It's going to be better than we can anticipate. 25 years ago, I brought a family of Jewish refugees to the United States of America. And I brought them to my hometown of uh, Thousand Oaks. I took them down to Albertsons and took them through the supermarket. This was the time when Russia, the Russian economy had totally collapsed. The athe atheistic system had absolutely fallen apart and I took them through. They said to me, <laughs> it's so good, it's better than we expected. They had come from a place of darkness and starvation. Now here they were walking around America and they had freedom. And they said, it's better than anything we had expected. Heaven is going to be better than anything that we can expect. Everything moves towards this. This is the end. But, now here's the but. Before Christ returns, there will be balls of fire and other great events. Now, I want you to take your Bible and turn to Matthew 16 and verses 1 down to 3. Matthew 16, 1 to 3. Then the Pharisees, Sadducees came, testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, when it is evening, you say, it'll be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, it'll be foul weather today for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites! You know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern uh, the signs of the times. The signs of the times are written in the prophecies of the Bible. And one of those great signs will be, we're going to see, 
walls of fire. Jesus said, you can predict the weather by the face of the sky, but you cannot discern uh, the signs of the times. Uh, and this expression could be used concerning the religious world of today, the signs of the times. Our information will come largely from Matthew 24, book on prophecy, Luke 21, chapter on prophecy, Revelation 11, and the Old Testament book of Joel, which describes the last days. Now turn with me, please, to Matthew chapter 24 and uh, verses 1 down to 3. Matthew 24, verses 1 down to 3. And this describes a conversation Jesus had with his disciples. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. His disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. And then you notice verse 3. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age or the end of the world? And so, listen carefully. The Jewish temple was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD, AD 70. It was symbolic of the end of the world preceded by signs in the same way the second coming of Christ will be preceded by signs. And so the collapse of the Jewish city of Jerusalem was a type of the end of the world. And Jesus and the disciples said, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? Therefore, the return of Christ will be the end of the age and the end of the world. And the Bible tells us it will be preceded by the signs of the times. The return of Christ equals the end of the world. Notice now with me, sign number one. Sign number one. Here it is. Signs. Miracles, wonders, lies, and deceptions. Matthew 24, verses 3 to 5, Jesus starts to preach. Matthew 24, 3 to 5. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Jesus said there'd be signs, miracles, wonders, lies, deceptions, false Christs. In recent times, we have witnessed millions and millions of people deceived by preachers, politicians, and gurus. Almost all Germany, about 95% of them, the most educated people in the world, Roman Catholics and Lutherans, People who call themselves Christians, 95% of them deceived by the Fuhrer. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. Yet people say today, we would not be deceived like those foolish Germans by the coming of a super personality. Almost all Russia. I've been to Russia um, 48 times. Tens of millions. More than 100 million. Probably 200 million. Completely deceived by Lenin and Stalin. Even though Stalin was killing people by the millions, they were calling him our father. Our father. What's wrong? 
What is wrong? Jesus said, deception is one of the last signs. In India right now, 60 million are deceived by Gurmet, Ram, Rahim, Singh, a convicted rapist, convicted by the Indian government that did the right thing. A convicted rapist, most likely a murderer who pretends to be the voice of God and 60 million people fall down and worship. Mm, Have mercy. We may get it a little closer to us soon, so just hold on. It is predicted that a person with great power will counterfeit the return of Christ. Please turn to 2 Thessalonians. Those of you who are watching, we quote from the Bible because the Bible is the source of truth. Not the voice of the church, not the voice of the priest or the pastor, anybody else, the voice of God's word. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 and onwards. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist, is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. It's almost incomprehensible to the human mind to believe that this great personality is going to come and he's going to pretend to be Christ and the whole world is going to bow down to him. Signs, miracles, wonders, lies and deceptions and i can show you in scripture where the bible teaches that the vast majority of people who call themselves christians will worship the antichrist why why one primary reason is ignorance that breeds gullibility don't Confuse me with the facts. I believe what I believe. I don't want anybody to disturb my thought processes. Let me tell you folks something, your safeguard and defense, the knowledge and understanding of the word of God. That is why we encourage people to personally Read the Holy Scriptures. That's why I say to people, read your Bible every day. Read the Bible. Jesus said, Jesus said these words. Jesus said that this is the very truth itself. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I can tell you today, that the world, including the United States, is being prepared uh, for the coming uh, of uh, the Antichrist. Sign number two. Wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes on an increasing intensity. Matthew 24, verses 6 to 8. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are 
are the beginning of sorrows. Look at me. The word sorrows means in the Greek, birth pains. The birth pains become stronger, more intense, a greater intensity, quicker and quicker and quicker because there have always been wars and earthquakes, but they will increase. I want you to come now, please, to Luke 21, 25 to 27. Luke 21, verse 25 to 27, Jesus said, there'll be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations. With perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory, Jesus said. Jesus said, on the earth, the nations will be in distress and perplexity. Perplexity, the sea and the waves are roaring. It seems, my friend, to point to great hurricanes as the sea heats up. Something like we've never seen before. Did you know this? Remember this. It is almost impossible to get someone to see a truth when his salary depends upon his not seeing it. (laughs) It's almost impossible to get somebody to see what's happening in the world uh, if it's somehow tied uh, to his paycheck. (sighs) These are the birth pains that will give birth to a new creation. It's going to happen. More and more and more. And people who are atheists are saying, what on earth is happening to the planet? The planet is groaning and the planet is sending us a message. And the message is Christ is coming. Christ is coming. Sign number three. The great persecution of the followers of Jesus Christ. Please notice Matthew 24 and verses 9 and onwards. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. And then he says, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. The great persecution of the followers of Christ have some facts for you that you won't hear on too many television stations. In our times, millions of Christians in Russia have been killed by the communist atheists. Millions have been killed in China by the communist atheists in the times of Mao Zedong. Today, today, tens of thousands of Christians have been murdered and are being murdered by is Islamic terrorists. Some people are afraid to use the term. It is a fact. Johan Candelan, the director of Religious Liberty Commission, wrote this. Hundreds of thousands of people today are being killed, brutalized, sold as slaves, imprisoned, tortured, threatened, discriminated against, and arrested solely because they are Christians. Today, there is a war against Christ and the church. They are being subjected to persecution and suffering, the extent of which we can hardly begin to comprehend because of their faith. More than 200 million people in over 60 nations are being denied their basic human rights for one reason only, they are. Ah, Christians. You may not hear this on American television. Much of this suffering is happening in Africa where churches are burning even as I speak. 
is happening in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia, Christians are not allowed even to exist. Didn't know that in Saudi Arabia, in China and in India and in Indonesia, where the leader, one of the leaders of the country has just been thrown into prison for one reason, he is a Christian. But you know, God's church is no stranger to persecution and the church will survive and the church will triumph. I want you to notice this. Matthew 16, 17 and 18, Jesus said, he said to them, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. and The gates of hell, Hades, shall not prevail against it. Let me tell you why you can't kill the church. Now the church in Iraq has been decimated, but I want you to know this, You can't kill the church of Christ because it is founded upon the rock and the rock is Christ himself. Now, we'll be back in just a few moments and I'm going to talk then about the great balls of fire that have prophetically been seen falling over American cities. Back with some amazing truths. Do you sometimes get lost in the crowd? Do you feel there's just no love in the room? Like everybody's against you? You're all alone with no one to lean on. Do you need a word of encouragement? Do you know God? Have you tried prayer? Pastor Carter would like to pray for you now. Let us pray. Call 1-800-526-9777. Nothing to buy, the call is free. Call 1-800-526-9777. billion people live in India. 200 million of these are Dalits, formerly called untouchables. 100% of your gift will go to fund projects for Dalit girls as an alternative. Your gift of $600 will educate, clothe, and feed one daylit girl between 5 and 15 years of age for one full year. Go to carterreport.org or to the address on the screen. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358, or in Australia, Contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.